Well, uh, he, 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 let's bring it back to a little jazz session again. I, you would, you as I was saying, you'd, make, you'd use four, maybe five mics on the kit, but let's say four. And uh, for the double bass is a problem, as I was trying to explain there. If, if you have a double bass in the same room as a drum kit, it's a very tricky business to record it. Uh, so generally speaking, I would try and get my hands on uh, beg, steal, or borrow uh, a small DPA, the Velier, uh, omnidirectional uh, 4060 type microphone. If you, if, if you guys know what I'm talking about there, uh, what you can do is you can suspend it uh, using uh, rubber bands, if, if necessary, uh, in the uh, bridge of a double bass. And uh, because it's omnidirectional, uh, it, it'll pick up uh, the bass very evenly across the frequencies now, but it will pick up spill. So uh, hopefully uh, you, the double bass player will have some sort of a pickup system on his bass. And you can bleed in a little bit of that into uh, into uh, the, the bass recording so that you can add a little bit of uh, extra level uh, and, and sort of uh, make up for the fact that you may be getting a lot of uh, not a ride symbol in your, <laughs> your total bass track, but uh, I mean, in the in 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 the scheme of things, as part of the track, you know, it, it's 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 survivable. It's not easy, but you can make it work. Um, the same problems exist when uh, so there's double bass and drums, let's say, and now we've got piano. Well, just stereo might the piano. What we would do, uh, we would usually have a very heavy uh, sort of drapes that we would throw over the piano uh, and kill as much of the spill going in and have the mics inside uh, with the lid sort of as, as, as closed down as you can while still having two microphones in there, usually uh, 414s. Um, and you might have a guitar, well, you can mic, mic up the amp and there's never there's none too much problems with that. Uh, the biggest problem you get from a guitar player with an amp is that he can be too loud in the room and he can be spilling into everybody. Uh, so, but that's that's just a question of getting their own balance amongst themselves. Um, and then if you have a singer or a lead instrument, let's say it's a sax or whatever, um, get him out as, you know, in front of the band. They hate being too far away from the band because they don't get the feel of the, uh, of, of the, the groove. Uh, so even if he's sort of six, eight foot away from the band, uh, mic them up with whatever if it's the sax uh, you'd probably use um, a Nyman or an AKG condenser um, or whatever it floats your boat uh, I've used Telefunken um, microphones I've used uh, Sanken CU41 I've used RCA ribbons uh, I've tried tried practically every microphone you can on, on either a lead vocal or a, or a, or a lead instrument to try and um, to try and get something unique about it, but it's worth experimenting with whatever mics you have to try and uh, for for um, for for recording in a room like that. I often find that a dynamic microphone, would you believe, uh, works very well because there's very little uh, bass proximity effect, and you can actually stick it right into the bell of the sax almost, and uh, and uh, get a, a fairly even sound without too much spill. So it, as I say, it's worth experimenting with, say, the likes of a, an SM7, a Shure SM7, uh, uh, or, or even an RD20, which is a fairly robust mic, hard to pop and hard to, uh, hard to get explosives on it. Worth, worth having a go at that.